So here we are. Almost two years ago, I started this project, and now I can almost see the finish line. The bedroom is complete. Bathroom is 95% complete. Still need to do a little staining and trim work in there to complete things. You're probably wondering, what the heck is he making now? Good question. I'm attempting to make a coffee table for the living room area. Professional woodworkers are probably looking at this shaking their heads, and I really couldn't blame them. One of these days, I hope to have enough time to use fine woodworking tools like chisels, little hand saws, and be able to cut really precise notches and all that goes with it. So for now, since time isn't on my side, I'm gonna continue to use power tools like my circular saw, my drill, and just screw everything together like I have been. So there it is, a folding storage chest coffee table. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without adding a little burn to it. That green wasn't quite what I was expecting. Looks like I'm gonna have to doctor it a little bit with some stain. Just a little bit too much like lime and not the olive color that I was going for. Much better, a lot closer to the rustic olive look I was going for. Using that rag and wiping off the stain really did help. Eventually, I plan to put the coffee table in front of a leather sofa, but for now, Sitting in the corner will do. For close to two years, I've used a little portable solar generator to power the cabin with mixed results. I'd only get a few hours of one time when I just had my overhead lights on. I had been looking for a better, more powerful setup that would not only power my lights, but also my small refrigerator. Thankfully, Bluetti reached out to me to see if I wanted to test out their AC300 B300 with PV420 solar panel. Not only should this power my cabin with no problem, but I could probably even use it at my house should a grid down scenario ever occur. The AC300 is a 3000 watt AC pure sine wave inverter that can handle a 6000 watt surge. The B300 battery bank can be linked with three other B300s for a total of 12,000 watt hours. 
I'm probably going to look to add at least one more B300, but for now I think the single unit should handle my power needs. As I mentioned, I really only have overhead lights in the living room bedroom areas, a small refrigerator, and some small battery packs for my power tools. The touch LED panel is fairly intuitive and will show the output of whatever you have connected to it, whether it be AC or DC. The AC300 comes with six 20 amp outlets, one 30 amp outlet, one USB-C port with 100 watt max, and four USB-A ports, along with a DC 12 volt and 24 volt outlet. After plugging in my bedroom lights, you can clearly see what the AC load is for them. Let's go ahead and plug in a few more things like my battery banks for my power tools and go ahead and turn on the living room lights to see how that affects the output of the AC load. The big test for me is when I go ahead and plug it into my portable refrigerator to see how much power that will draw. The refrigerator will go into the 12 volt DC port on the AC300. I'm going to go ahead and run that test first thing in the morning, so stay tuned. All of the instructions and packaging were very neatly done and very easy to understand. The AC300 and B300 each have their own instruction manual, which helps make things a lot easier. There's also a Blue Eddy app that allows you to monitor and control your AC300 from your mobile phone with relative ease. Along with the units themselves, you do get a nice complement of cables like a 15 amp AC charging cable, a multifunctional DC charging cable, and a car charging cigarette lighter cable. So you can see here, I pretty much have every one of my electronics connected to the Blue Eddy. So let's take a look at what the output load looks like. Again, I don't have my refrigerator plugged into the DC port quite yet, but I am charging the battery bank and the AC port. Along with the AC300 and B300, you also do get the PV420 solar panel. I plan to test this out and give a review in a future video. So here we are the following morning where I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my refrigerator and see what the DC load looks like. You can go ahead and look at the timestamp at the top right of the LED screen to get an idea of what the draw is. So basically four hours later, I've lost 8% of the B300 battery power. So I'm thinking I can get a good one to two days of power for this refrigerator. So overall first impressions are very positive. This really is a whole home expandable battery backup system. It has a 3500 plus life cycle to 80% thanks to its LifePo4 battery. Again, I'd like to thank Blue Eddy for sending this to me to test out. If interested, there'll be a discount link in the video description. I think in a previous video, I mentioned that I had used roughly 700 2x8s. Along with that, there were countless 2x4s, 2x6s, and some 2x10s and 2x12s. Not to mention 4x4 posts and 6x6 posts. So you may be wondering what I'm doing here. I'm actually moving all of the scrap lumber from one pile to another pile a little bit further behind the cabin. All in all, when I think about the amount of lumber I used, this pile isn't so bad. 
This is one of the necessary evils of construction, the cleanup process. On one hand, I'm kind of glad that I'm at this stage in the building process. On the other hand, I know I have a lot of cleanup ahead of me. I need this area free of debris because I plan to use the underneath of the bedroom for a woodshed, a tool shed, a rainwater catchment system, along with insulating it and completely closing it in before winter hits. Should be a piece of cake, right? One of the comments that I got quite a bit during this build was, why did you leave the OSB exposed to the elements? I guess I really wasn't that concerned since the OSB was flush with the 2x8s and I didn't really think the rain would penetrate it. Almost two years later and there's really no signs of the OSB flaking or degrading at all. My plan was to always put a trim piece over top of the OSB so water would never be an issue. And that's what I'm about to do here. What an absolutely beautiful fall morning. 39 degrees and time for the first fire of the season. There's nothing quite like a fire in a cabin out in the woods.
and making a nice home cooked breakfast makes it all that much better. I've gotten a lot of questions over the past couple years on what type of stove I have. This is a Drolet Spark 2, which is one of the newer design high efficiency stoves. I've really been impressed how cleanly it burns, but also it has a really good cooktop surface as well. Looks like it's sausage and eggs for breakfast. It really is nice to have a portable refrigerator to keep things cold. Man, look at that fire. It's purring like a kitten. Another item to complete was to finish the ends of the 2x8 logs with some 1x6 pine picket fence boards. Each log end needs to be wrapped by the 1x6s, which will prevent the rain and weather from rotting the logs out. Even without being wrapped for close to two years, I've not seen any signs of the logs being warped, rotted, or anything. I really think that burning the wood has helped out quite a bit. These 1x6 pine picket fence boards were $2 each, so I needed about 15 of them to get the job done. Man, what an absolutely beautiful fall morning to work. Sunshine, crisp weather, the leaves falling off the trees, it really doesn't get much better than this.
Another item to button up the cabin was to add these two by eight pieces on the ends of the logs. This helps create a weather seal where the two logs come together at the corners. Once finished, these will also be wrapped by the one by six trim. Now on to my least favorite thing about the cabin, chinking. The one thing that I have avoided for almost two years is chinking the outside of the cabin. It should have been done long ago, but I'm good at procrastinating. I'm going to do a little bit at a time, so hopefully it won't be that bad. The goal is to have the entire outside of the cabin chinked before winter gets here. Even though there's no signs of rot between the logs, it's probably a good idea to get this done and make sure the cabin is completely weatherproof.